Let's bring in our panel. Peter McGoran, former minister in the Howard government and now at Bondi Partners. Simon Banks, former Labor advisor, now managing director at Hawker Britain. Gentlemen, great to see you both. Peter, what have you made of, of Jim Chalmers' uh, essay? 6,000 words. It's a, a pretty lengthy analysis of where he sees the economy. Uh, it's copped a bit of flack from various quarters, but lapped up by others. What's your read? It's just staggering hubris. He's been there five minutes and suddenly he thinks he can reshape capitalism and the markets. In other words, it's same old formula. Uh, big, big government, market intervention, red tape, regulation. Uh, and, and secondly, the best advice anyone could give Mr Chalmers is go back to basics. The, the Federal Treasurer has three levers over the economy, fiscal policy, monetary policy and wages policy. And on all three, he has immense challenges and he cannot say that he has mastered and secured the sustainability of the economy on any of those three bases. Fiscal policy, the pressures the budget's facing, and, 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 and I understand and have sympathy for the government on this, NDIS, uh, aged care, defence. Had, had he not spent tens of billions of dollars on that, on monetary policy. Well, we know interest rates are keep going up in response to inflation. It's, an, it's a dog chasing its tail in effect. And wages policy, enormous pressures to raise the minimum, minimum wage uh, rate to count uh, and take into uh, account uh, inflation. And we now have the CFMEU promising uh, or threatening uh, a wages campaign. I'm sorry, this is just vainglorious behaviour. Simon Banks, your assessment of the, this intervention, it's not the first. We've seen it before with Kevin Rudd and Wayne Swan laying out their, their uh, values, their, their vision. Now, Jim Chalmers. Yeah, in fact, in fairness, uh, you know, Jim's written books before, which I think uh, some of your viewers might want to go away and have a read as well, because what he said in this article in the monthly is entirely consistent with what he's been arguing with throughout his life. And I think you can see from... Peter's reaction that he stirred up a bit of a hornet's nest and, like, what's he arguing for? He's ask, arguing for capitalism with a purpose, that capitalism actually has to work for all Australians, for all global citizens, and at, at a time when we're fracturing uh, as citizens within our country and more broadly, when the power of despotic governments are increasingly exercising uh, their power over their citizens, we need to make democracy and the economy work for ordinary Australians. And that's all that Jim's saying. And, in fact, if you look at the proposals where, that he's linked to it in terms of policy things, they're about getting the private sector to invest in things that are important for Australia's economic future, the green energy transformation, and you were just speaking to Tim uh, about that, Kieran, but also in housing, where we know we've got a massive shortfall in housing stock at the moment, particularly for people on low and middle incomes. And we need to have serious investment in that. And he's working with the private sector, in particular superannuation funds, to bring those trillions of dollars of assets into the housing market to make sure that everyone in Australia gets a decent house. Oh, What's wrong with that? On to uh, The Voice, Peter McGoran. Peter Dutton will attend the referendum working group on Thursday. Is that a, a good move by him to, to be constructive? Um, Definitely. He has sought information and it's incumbent upon him to take the opportunities offered to, to obtain the information for himself. So that's all good. Um, thankfully, this week, the temperature seems to have been lowered from last week where we got the perfect storm on Australia Day, the Invasion Day, the Nationalistic uh, Australia Day, um, Alice Springs and uh, the, the demonstrations invasion day and so on. So everybody's taking a deep breath this week and, and so long as the issues in Alice Spring are tackled with purpose and, and commitment uh, w w without any expectation they can be cured overnight, th then, then, then the voice still has a chance. But if we're going to see more Alice Springs ignored, papered over uh, or explained on the basis that the voice would have stopped the, the, the violence and, and, the, and, the, and the breakdown on law and order, then it will just sink into a quagmire. Simon, are you concerned about where the discussion is at right now? You're seeing sort of splintering support on, on the far left, as well as, we, you know, we've seen the Nationals, of course, oppose it. 
Yeah, look, I mean, I think it's inevitable when this debate sort of kicks off this year and as we see it progress that you're going to hear some of the, the loudest voices, but they're not the most representative voices, Kieran. And the truth is, whether it's Senator Price on the right or Senator Thorpe, on the left, they actually don't represent, for example, the mainstream Indigenous community on these issues. The process that came up with The Voice was a deeply consultative process that went for years across the nation to try and figure out how Indigenous Australians wanted to be recognised in the Constitution. It's a really important point to say that the democratic and the community-led effort that has led to this proposal. And, like, here we are today with the No campaign running around saying now that they want to include migrants in the Constitution. Well, I'm not inherently opposed to that. But they haven't bothered to ask the migrants and their, and their representatives themselves whether they want to be represented in the Constitution or how they want to be represented in the Constitution. It's typical of the No campaign, their lack of respect for basically deep, thoughtful consultation with ordinary Australians is, I think, going to be a symbolism of their campaign, and I actually think this has been a pretty bad couple of days uh, for the No campaign. So